Welcome to The Chrissy B Show and if you're a new viewer, just to let you know, we are the UK's only TV programme that is really dedicated to helping you in your mental health, well-being and success. Now tonight is all about detoxing and taking care of your mind and body after what has undoubtedly been a busy and potentially quite unhealthy Christmas period. So first we'll be visiting Helena with today's Behind the Fame, then later on we'll be getting some fitness and juicing tips from nutritionist Hannah Richards. The festive period can be a difficult time for our mind and body and it may come as no surprise that we tend to gain weight over Christmas. I don't know if you guys have already. So on average we'll put on between half to one kilo which can seem quite hard to lose but if you think about it, if we don't then um, lose that weight and the same thing happens year after year that can lead to considerable weight gain But it's not just the eating that can take its toll on us stress and anxiety can build particularly when all the family get together and this can of course have a negative impact on a person's mental health and well-being According to the Telegraph the average Briton will have argued a minimum of five times during Christmas Day with the first argument having started at 1030 Christmas morning and it only gets worse from there apparently from children getting the wrong presents to complaints over fathers drinking too much and mothers stressing out in the kitchen it all apparently comes to a head with families feuding an hour into Christmas dinner and ending with bickering late into the evening so was this your case this Christmas and do you need a bit of a mind detox well, if so, be sure to take note of some of my top tips later on in the show where I'll be telling you how you can rid your mind of those negative thoughts and stay mentally strong and healthy. But first, let's get some of your thoughts. Tiff says, going on a detox and self-reflecting all break. This semester and finals drained me and I need to get back to myself. Jules agrees by saying, need to detox my body and life. And Holly is committed to detoxing, saying, serious detox commencing 1st of January and this year I mean it. And Demi is thinking about her body. She says, serious detox is needed after Christmas. I've put on two stone in the last two weeks. Wow. And detoxing isn't necessarily physical, as Lisa states. I need to go on a detox, cleanse myself of everything. I need to meditate and fast before next semester. So clearly the idea of detoxing after Christmas is something we've all thought about. But before we look into how we can cleanse our bodies and minds, it's time for this year's final Behind the Fame with Helena Shard. Welcome to the show, Helena. Thank you, Chrissy. Did you have a lovely Christmas? Oh, fantastic. Was it? Always. <laughs> Loads of food. I have to say lots of nutritious things too. Really? And oh. exercise. So oh, I've really? been on it. That's really good. Yeah, I've been taking tips, right. top tips from everyone here on the show. Okay. So, um, and all, you were trying some well. juices later with Hannah, weren't you? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, they're yummy. Yummy. <laughs> so good. Um, so it's always so good to talk about people, people that do amazingly good mm. for the world, and are selfless people. And just want to start with um, David Knott, who's a, again selfless NHS. Uh, surgeon who works for three major hospitals here mm -hmm. um, in London but for the last 23 years has risked his life really in trouble spots um, recently back from Aleppo in Syria mm -hmm. where he's saved lots of children adults and done the most wonderful things um, he's not going to places like this anymore um, he is unfortunately suffering from PTSD uh, but he it's incredible his, his stories are amazing he's now got his own team so he does things over Skype, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. But um, a lovely story uh, to do with Her Majesty, yeah, our Queen, think, which is yeah, really, really yeah. lovely. Um, and he was invited to lunch. I think he, he was given an award two years ago, but she asked him how it was in Aleppo. And he's obviously with PTSD, he's suddenly felt really upset. Mm -hmm. His bottom lip was quivering. He just was looking at the blank wall. And she noticed, obviously, that he was upset and said, let me help you. 
do you want to meet my dogs? And they actually, yeah. for the half an hour underneath the table, they fed the dogs and you know cuddled them and everything. And it was just such a really nice human so side. Yeah, it's animal <laughs> therapy and really nice yeah. to see Queen in as a human mm -hmm. rather than the Queen as she is, do such a lovely thing. So yeah, a really, really sweet yeah, story. So I love that. Um, Duke of Edinburgh Award scheme, which we, we all know, know about, but it's 60 years old and it's for 14 to 24 years old mm. people. I, I just wish I'd had that chance actually, because it sounds yeah, so exciting. Yeah. But the ma amazing thing about it is the Duke of Edinburgh, we always know him for being a little bit, you know, his comments and things. Puts but his foot in it like... <laughs> he, do he does, best, but, him, but yeah. he's actually very modest and actually he yeah. always wants the best out of people. He's quite shy and I think that's the mm -hmm. side that's sort of misread. Um, and since the Duke of Edinburgh Award has expanded to 144 nations, which is amazing, it's, it's all to do with the fact that you know you can't learn everything in the classroom, no, no. and it gives people the opportunity to grow, um, and they meet people and they help people, and obviously then they, they face all the challenges, you yeah. know, which is which yeah, is the most fantastic really thing. And I know recently the Countess of Wessex, Sophie, she she did a diamond. Another thing I was to say, you do like a you build it up. It's like a, a bronze, silver, and gold award mm. scheme. Um, and there's a diamond thing at the moment, and the Council of Wessex ran four, not ran, she did a charity bike ride 400, um, 450 miles and weighed, uh, mm. raised £300,000, which is great, wow, yeah. which is it's really amazing. good. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really, really good. Um, so, lovely. Um, also, TV presenter Mark Wright, mm. um, he's a, an ex footballer, professional footballer, and he's now 29. But he, you know, you see him doing silly things, it's all about fashion and keeping fit, but actually he's opened up recently about his secret battle with OCD, which I, I didn't know about. Um, he is helping others now tackle, tackle the disease. Um, he's, he's, his form of disease is to do with symmetry, okay. which does, it's not as severe as some. It just, mm. it, a simplistic version is like he'll touch one leg, one side, and he'll have to touch the other. So he'll always have oh, to... Repeat but it's still quite, thing. It, yeah, it's difficult it is something, to, to and his with, yeah. his father has it, um, mm. and his sister, who's also well known, Jessica Wright, has the condition. But um, he's now been working with charities, and he's about to front a program as well on it. Okay. So that's an interesting one to watch out for. Yeah. yeah. Um, another very very brave woman called Charlie Webster, a fellow sports presenter. Um, he's she's a keen runner and triathlete and boxer, so very 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 mm. fit. And her story is amazing because she was going to be presenting in Rio recently. Um, she'd run, did a 3,000, uh, it's, it's about bike rides I think, but uh, did a gruelling 3,000 mile charity bike ride from the UK to Rio, raising loads of money. Got there ready to present and then was sort of bleeding out of every orifice. And, and she thought she was dehydrated, but I mean that would have been a bit extreme. Raced to hospital and within you know, a very short space of time was told to prepare for death. Uh, which is just, isn't that just the most scary thing? Her organs began to fail. Um, it actually ended up being malaria. Uh, wow. she, so her mother was called or her friends were called to see her and they really were. It was, mm -hmm. you know, that last right scenario. And, but she was uh, put into an induced coma and suddenly became, I don't know what was it, it came and she had like a fighting spirit and managed to, you know, wow. I'm going to live, yeah. I'm going to live. Um, and the doctors told her that she recovered because she was so fit. So that is a lesson to everybody to, we all need to, get to fit keep fit people. because it makes, you know, good for you and we it makes you to get fight fit, these people. things. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, that's, that's something special. <laughs> and talking about it's a fantastic programme at the moment called The Big Fix, mm -hmm. which is great. Again, I just think it's, it's something that's so simple. It's, um, it's to do with seven of the UK's leading inventors, so engineers, designers, computer programmers, mm -hmm. and they get together to really to build life-changing things for people in need. Um, and there's so many different people are covered, but there's one, one young man, James Dunn, he's 23, who's term, a terminally ill photographer. Mm. And the only thing that takes his mind off his disease is photography. But unfortunately, due to his fingers have joined together and things, and he couldn't take photographs. And an engineer called Jude Pullen actually worked carefully, so to build a, a camera just using different things, using different devices, mm -hmm. because he couldn't use his hand. And now, I mean, it's just take, it takes him to a happy place. It's the most amazing oh, thing. And he wants to leave yeah. this legacy, um, which is so special. And it's important. horrible when you're not well as well, not being able to do the things that you would normally do that you love. It, yeah. it makes it worse, it's the whole just, situation it's, worse. It's such a lovely, it's so yeah. heart-rendering. So, and there's lots of stories like that. He's just one of all, but 
you know, I love photography, so I thought that was a nice one. Um, Prince Harry, who I love, <laughs> as you know, there's a few people I love, but I just think he's very special. And um, he turned, I think Centerbale is, is his main charity, uh, which he started really because he wanted to make his mother proud. And he wanted to use his position. It was a bit of a runaway. He escaped to Africa, but he realised he really, really wants to use, wanted to use his name and his position to do good. So ten years on, after working for Centerville, um, which means forget me not. I didn't realise that. Uh, uh, it's, it includes HIV clinics for children, education centres, and schools for the blind. And there's so many things. It's all about educating. Yeah. And one in three um, of the people there are orphans, which is so high, isn't it? Yeah, three, wow. It's really, really high. But I mean, the lovely thing is he's, he's so fired up with his position and mm. that fire and that absolute, because he wears his heart on his sleeve yeah, and it's yeah. just such a lovely thing to see. And it, I mean, he's talking about the smallest of things as well. Okay, if, you can't, if you're not him and you can't use your position in such a huge way, you can do other mm. small things yeah, and it makes such a difference. Um, and one of the comments that he made, which he says that um, he says, there's too much, you know, too much focus is on bad news in life and it's great to be good. It's just completely mm. boring to be bad, which I think is, yeah, is such, good, a, nice. such a, a good co a comment. Good quote. <laughs> and his passion is brilliant. But just a couple of things. It's um, Elton John was talking about him being such an amazing, amazing person, so warm, mm -hmm. just like his mother. Um, Joss Stone, who's also Centerbell's ambassador, uses her music to bring people together and inspires people to move in a positive direction. Yeah. And the last one is Chris Martin, who says that we're all magical people and where possible we should all help. So we should all be human humanitarian ambassadors. And again, I think that's just a really nice one to finish on. Definitely. Helena, thank you so, so much. And we'll see you again for the next Behind the Fame. Thank, thank you, Chrissy. You. All right, guys, so after the break, we're going to be looking at a fitness demonstration we recently had in the studio, courtesy of fitness trainer Feija Jede, who showed us some effective moves we can do in our own living room. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone. Now, today's episode is about detoxing after Christmas, so it's only right that we get a fitness demonstration. Here, fitness trainer Feija Jede shows us how we can do a workout in our downtime even while we're watching TV. Alright guys, so now it's time for our workout with Faye, but I, I wasn't actually going to join in because I've got heels. You're not supposed to train with heels, everybody, That's but I'm right. just joining in just for today. And I'd also like to introduce you to our lovely new addition to our team. This is Julianne, everyone. Hi. You have seen her on a face mask that we did before, <laughs> but you'll be seeing her a lot more of her because she's our new producer and presenter. So you'll be seeing, you've seen some behind the scenes stuff of, of yeah. you already, haven't yeah. they? The you'll, viewers. you'll be seeing so much of me, you'll get sick of me. Okay. <laughs> so tell us a bit about your background in, in production and stuff. Um, um, well, I've just started uh, out with the uh, Chrissy B show and uh, I've been loving it. It's yeah. great. It's been really, <laughs> really wonderful. It. Yeah. <laughs> She's been working yeah. very hard with everybody. <laughs> so now it's time to de stress with some exercise. Yes. All right. So, Faye, you take it away. Show yes. us what we're going to yes. do first. So, these are simple exercises you can do at home with a simple equipment, which is your home sofa. One mm -hmm. sofa. So, we're going to start with sitting down. I'm going to sit down quickly first just to demonstrate because Chrissy and Julianne, Julianne yeah. are going to join me as well. But at first, sit down comfortably in your chair. Okay, back nice and tall, suck in the navel, and then just take a deep breath in. Okay, so you're going to draw a deep breath in and tuck yourself under like this, and then breathe out by pulling out the chest. So, suck it in again and push out your chest. This is just opening up your chest for the work we're going to do. Tuck, take, suck it in, take in the oxygen and put it out. One more. And out. So, you know, at home you can now do some shoulder rolls in your chair. You're watching your favourite programme right up to your ears. Good. And then we can do some toning. So we're going to start okay. doing some toning, yeah? Aren't we? Yes, yes. we are. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So first we're going to start with some biceps. I'm sitting down, but biceps means you just tuck your elbow into your sides, everybody. And then you can use a tin of baked beans if you have one at home, one in each hand or weight. And then you just lift it up and down. Now, I want you guys to imagine that it's heavy what you're holding. <laughs> okay. 
so don't cheat. As you imagine that it's heavy, you're look at your biceps tension. on TV, Faye. I know. Wow. Oh, look at that. That's right. You're going to feel some tension there, right yes. there. That's where we're working. And keep going just like that. Two and one. Now, I want both of you to take a pew. You're going to be on this side, Juliana. And Chris is going to be here. We're going to okay. work our tricep. Okay. That's the flabby part under the arm that everybody mm -hmm. hates, okay? So, what you're guys going to do, watch me first. You're just going to put yourself. Resting your arms a bit and then just take a step forward onto mm. this comfortable with your feet, yeah? Okay. So let's do that. I'm going to watch you go. That's it. Walk it forward. Perfect. That's lovely. And Chrissy too. And what we're going to do is we're going to dip down with our arms. That's it. Okay. And keep a nice L shape. So let's do it together. Down and up. Down. You can and really up. feel that, right? Down. And uh, we're working our tricep. What is the point of a gym membership? <laughs> Definitely, you don't need one. You can do it at home. Two more. And one. Did you feel that, yes, guys? I can oh, feel it. that's really lovely. Good. And you can sit back and you can do that again as many times as you want, okay? So now what we're gonna do is gonna be balancing, okay? So I'm okay. just gonna demonstrate. We're gonna come up with one leg and we're gonna suck in our navel when we come up. And you can keep your hands out to help you. But you're gonna sit back in your chair. Everybody sits in a chair, but then you come up with one leg. Okay. So you do this, keeping it up and up on it. I'm gonna try as best I yeah, can. Yeah, try the best you can with your heels. Right, right. <laughs> I'm gonna start with my right leg because it's my stronger yeah. side. Are we ready? Yes. Yep. And up we go. Up. Oh, that's not easy to do. <laughs> and down. How are you finding it, Chrissy? Up. Yeah, good. A bit and hard in heels, but down. I can see, I can feel it, definitely. Juliana, how are you finding it? It's good, it's good. You're gonna feel this in your core, your stomach. Your yes, leg, oops. of course. <laughs> this is my balance. It's very hard, isn't right, it? I keep, I keep going. Oops. I'm cheating oops. a little bit by putting my hand on the sofa to push okay. myself up. Because obviously when you're starting out, yeah. you want to take it gently. And then when you're more advanced, take the arms away and just sit in. When, when, would you, when would you switch legs? Oops. We're going to do it right now. Okay. <laughs> take a break and let's switch legs. Did you feel that on the leg? Yeah. Yeah. Are we ready on the other side? How many reps would you do that would be? I would do 10. Okay. Have a break, change to the other leg, and then have a break, do another part of the body, and then go back to the legs. Okay. Yeah. Can you show us maybe, I think we've got time for one more. Yes. Um, Faye, can you show us one more? Yes, yes definitely. Oh, I don't mind. the chest and Yeah, stuff. yeah. Okay. For the chest. Okay. Let's use the chair again. And what we're going to do is we're going to press. So if I stand away from the chair, just a couple of feet, and then we're going to lean forward onto the chair, with our arms secure, okay. and then we're going to do a press up. So how, I'm going to How would back. you want our legs? So I'm going to put my legs like this together. Okay. So if I demonstrate okay. first, you push. If I'm like this, it's not my chest working. It's more my back. Oh, so you, so you right always back. have to go back a little bit more and know that you've just had to push, and you're like, ah, oh, that's when you know it's your chest working. Yeah. So Juliana's quite tall, so let's try you. Okay. That's it, and then yeah. lean down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can Are you feeling feel it on the chest? So that's when you know. That's it. Excellent. Can you just give us one more? Wow, well okay, done, we well done. So Chrissy, try it as well, Chrissy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can do is sort of start like this and just move your feet back oh, okay. until you're in the right position. Yeah? Because it's oh, a good so gauge. That makes it Yeah, it makes easier it easier. Yeah. Okay. So just walk your feet back. Onto where this you feel. Really good. You can feel this, guys. And breathe as well as you push down. Breathe out. That's it. Really good for the chest. Known as a press up, of course. Yes. But with a chair. That's really <laughs> good. <laughs> Should we do two more? Yes. One. And one. Last one. The, 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 oh, the well <laughs> That's it. So there's so many exercises yeah, you can do great. using that chair at yeah. home. So oh, you have no excuses. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Thank you guys. Julianne, thank you so much. Oh, it's no worries, Chris. This is great. For, like, saying hi to, to our lovely viewers at home. It's all right. See and you guys, guys well, it is time. Uh, well, let me speak to them because we can all see. Yes. They're seeing there. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Well, thanks again very much to Faye there. Now, clearly Christmas was a stressful time for many and it's important we take care of our bodies as well as our minds. So here, Ben Cooper tells us how we can self-massage and de-stress. Let's take a look. 
Hi and welcome to the Move360 Studios. Uh, my name is Ben. Uh, today we're going to be talking about self-massage. So the more you train, the more you're going to need to self-massage because otherwise injuries occur. So I'm going to show you four different self-massage uh, techniques. I'm using a foam roller. Um, you can use a tennis ball, uh, you can use a football, um, a rolling pin, but that will hurt a little bit more. But this, this guy is the best if you can get one of these. So we're going to start over the top on the quadriceps and just rolling up and down. Any tension you find, just focus on that area and spend a little bit more time on it. The more pain, the better really, because you know you're doing the right thing. So I'm moving across onto each side of the legs, onto the outside as well, and straight down the middle, and you'll find little tender points that you'll just work into. Once you've done those, they should ease off and they'll feel a lot, a lot freer. The next one we're going to do is come over the other side of the roller. So you're in a seated position. The leg is then going to go on the other leg and this is going to work into your hips. So the hips, again, another area that can get quite tight. Prone to injuries as well in the hips. So you want to keep them mobile, especially when you're running. So this, again, you feel some tender areas in the back of the hip as you open that up and just spend a little time rolling that through. You'll do that on both sides, so switch the legs and do the other side as well. And again, you might have one side that's, that's more tender than the other, so do, um, focus on that side more. And just feel how the body feels. The next one, once you've done about 30 seconds on each of those, we're gonna do the back. So lie down onto the roller, hands behind the head, lift the bum and then just move up and down on the upper back. So this is really nice to improve your posture. Helps alleviate any tension in the upper back, which a lot of people hold tension there. And again, do that for about 30 seconds to a minute. The final one, which is specific, specifically for the runners, is on the calves. So seated on the mat, we go legs, both legs onto the roller, lift one leg up onto the top and then roll that through again with the toes extended up towards your head. So you'll find a few little trigger points or tender spots on the calves, roll them through. Again, about 30 seconds on each and then switch and then repeat on the other side. And you do that self-massage routine, it will dramatically reduce your chances of injuries. Thank you very much to Ben Cooper. Well, after the break, we'll be getting some top juicing tips from nutritionist Hannah Richards, and I'll be hearing some of your opinions on getting healthy after Christmas. CB and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. everyone where as you know today we're looking at how you can take care of your body after the gluttony if that applies to you of Christmas. We sent Pax Brown out to London to find out how you're getting on and here's what he found out. Hello everyone today I'm in the lovely streets of Angel in North London to see what you guys think about detoxing after Christmas and the new year. Let's go and find out. So uh, how was 2016 over for you overall? Would you say it was a good, bad year? Uh, quite a bad year because I lost a couple of good friends. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So that was quite a sad year. But hopefully 2017 will be better. It's been okay. It could have been better, but be grateful for what you get. So yeah, it's been okay. Good year. Not too bad. Good. Very good. It was quite a good year. I see a lot of people on social media saying it's a bad year, but I thought it was quite good for me. It's my first year of college and uh, it's going well for me. What was your best moment, the happiest probably my event? My daughter got married in November and that was fantastic. So that was the best day. The anniversary of being here for one year <laughs> as I moved in 2015. So it became a year in 2016. So yeah, that was good. 
sounds a bit boring, but receiving my GCSE results because I did quite well. I did better than people thought I was going to do, which was the best thing. Well, I will say that the world looks safe a bit with the elections, with the Brexit and everything. So we are happy with it anyway. Although some people are not, but that's the will of the people. Anything you expect from 2017? Um, no, not really. No, no. I think just just hope everybody stays well and uh, and keeps healthy. I don't expect anything. Um, I would like things to get a lot better worldwide, especially for animals. I'm against animal cruelty, against eating animals, and I'd like to see that put an end to no cruelty towards animals. I'd love that. New sort of gadgets, like we would uh, see quite a lot of that. Like, uh, there's this drone I was looking at, and uh, it's amazing all the new technology that's coming out. Goodwill to, all, to, uh, to each man that I hope the world is better the way it is. Do you have any New Year's resolutions for 2017? I make them and break them, there's no point. <laughs> I'd say to get fitter. I need to eat healthier and a lot of jogging, I'd say. My New Year's resolution is for me to carry on doing what I'm doing and hope that my three kids to be fulfill what I, what I want them to be. Continue not to smoke. <laughs> Are you going to detox after Christmas and New Year? <laughs> I'll, I'll try my best, but I'll see how it goes. Not really, because I don't overindulge in anything, so I will just eat the same as what I normally eat. No, not at all. I don't drink or smoke. So that's it. What about with all the food? Yeah, maybe the food, yes. I will eat a lot, so maybe the yeah, detox could be possible for that, but not alcohol but detox. Thank you very much to Pax and to the public. So now I'm delighted to be joined by Hannah Richards, who's going to be showing us how we can make some lovely detox juices. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Chrissy. How are you? I'm good. Lovely to have you back. Thank you. Lovely to be back, especially after Christmas. Yes. Yeah, so obviously, most people, I would say, have um, overdone it. Uh, overindulged. Maybe still over overdoing it. Yeah. Maybe they're not going to start the detoxing now, right? True. Just drop right after Christmas. But, you know, just in case they're thinking about it, you're going to yeah. show us a few good ones. Absolutely. So, yeah, I guess most people start in January, don't they? Yes. <laughs> sort of like prolonging the indulgence out. But so everything we've got here, all these vegetables and fruits are all good for detoxing. OK. Especially after the Christmas period where basically everything we have at Christmas is sort of a you know, creates inflammation, Christmas cake, alcohol, yeah. brandy sauce, the whole works. All that stuff. So this, every, all fruit and vegetables, number one fact to remember is it's all good detoxifying things, foods for your body and for your organs. Mm -hmm. So, um, are you a juicer? I, so, sometimes. Yep, I have to good. be in the mood, but yeah. <laughs> so let's kick it off with, so I'll do some chopping and then you can be the plunger. Okay. All right. I'll okay. So we'll do a ginger and apple shot. And okay. this is really good in the morning to get the system going. It's really good for inflammation um, and it's really good for the digestive system as well. Okay. So two sort of nobules of ginger. It smells like it does, yeah. There you go. Um, and then I'm going to just chop two apples and I'll put them there and you can okay. add those in. Should I start? I don't want yeah, to like go voice out. Okay. That does smell lovely already, doesn't it? Perfect. Mm, that ginger. Ooh. It's good. That's all you need for that one? And that's all we oh, need. Okay. So this is just going to be, it's going to be quite fiery, but the thing is with gin, gin, the apple, the apple sort of just dampens the, um, the apple just dampens it down a little bit. So we'll just have a little try of these two. There we go. It's just going to burn because there was quite a lot of ginger in there. Yeah, this is going to burn. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to do this after each juice, guys, don't worry. And you can, you could add hot water um, and then make it a bit of a, a longer Ooh, it's drink. It's nice. And if it was, if ginger wasn't your thing, you can just add more apple um, or just take the ginger down. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You just choked a little bit on that one. Oh, it's quite hot. <laughs> it's good and hot. But it's lovely. So what we'll do is we'll just carry on going. Mm -hmm. And we'll put more apple in and then we're going to add carrot and carrot is a really fantastic 
antibacterial, antifungal vegetable when you juice it. Okay. So when anyone has sort of under, overdone the carbohydrates or has any sort of yeast or fungal infections, one of the best um, things you can do is drink carrot juice. Okay. And it now, helps if, you if see you in the eat, dark. Like, the raw fruit rather than juicing, is that also just as beneficial or does this kind of get to the cells? I always, absolutely. So I always say that this is sort of like an injection of vitamins and minerals straight into you okay. um, because you don't have to digest all the, you know, right, all the fibre okay. through the vegetables. You're just yeah. sort of, you're squeezing out all Everything. the juice. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So this is, uh, we're just going to be noisy for a couple more minutes. All right, guys. <laughs> Bear with us. Let's right. go. Thank you. Okay, let's put, I'll put it on double speed this time. Double speed. Let's get it done quicker. Spread time, please. Super quick. Now there are lots of different um, juices, and this is um, you can get a cold press juicer. And although this is cold press juicing, it's um, it's not as traditional as, as the way they used to cold press juice, which was basically like with a wooden press, and it's almost like squeezing out all the juice of the vegetable. Yeah. And obviously, it's not as as, as loud as this one. Gonna press your glass. Yep. So Should I'm just gonna add that into there. Should we empty it completely? I, I finished all of mine, was I not meant to? Yeah, 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 no, finish it. <laughs> Should we leave a bit in there or are we going to use that for the next no, one? No, yeah, you have it. All right, okay. So this is just carrot, apple and ginger. It's quite a common one you see in, in, um, in all the cafes and shops. Yeah. Um, and uh, and, it, and it's, great for your, it's great for your gut. Mm -hmm. See, this one's it's much sweeter mm. than the other one, but lovely. Because the apple. Mm -hmm. Now... Another one you normally see in the shops is one with um, celery in as well. And celery can be an allergen, and it's not everyone's cup of tea. It's got quite a distinct taste to it. Do you like celery, Chrissy? I have to admit, not, not much. Okay. No. Should we leave it out? No, we can put it in. We can I've, put I've, it still, in? I've had it in juices before, so it's yeah. not, it doesn't taste so strong in juices. So, the thing, remember, the good, the good tip to remember is things like carrot, uh, sorry, it's a cucumber. <laughs> cucumber, <laughs> celery, and courgette. Oh. All provide quite a lot of water, right? So okay. they're and apples do as well. So they're good for making um, the yield. It, the yield of these is high. Yeah. Whereas obviously ginger <laughs> and spinach or any leaves, the yield of juice is quite low. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to have one of the others in okay. because it gives you. Um, so what we'll do now, we're going to do, actually, we're not going to do, do that. We're going to do a cucumber one. And this one is sort of very hydrating. So for everyone who's really overindulged over Christmas um, with the alcohol, alcohol can dehydrate you. Okay. So we're going to rehydrate everyone. We're going to use some cucumber, some lemon. We'll probably squeeze the lemon, okay. I think. Some ginger and some beautiful mint. Mm. Remember, you can use herbs in all your juices as well. Okay, ready? Shall we begin? Let's go. Okay. I see what you mean about the water. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot. So you now, yeah. Uh, oh. Stuck. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Can't get inside. That's it. There we go. Okay. One more. One more pair. And two more cucumbers. Okay. Done. See, about the pears, I, I didn't think you could actually juice pears because they're quite mushy normally, aren't they? Yeah, so when you get your pears, there's obviously lots of different types of pears, but William pears are those big green ones and they're quite good because they're, you know, pears turn, they, they turn mushy quite quickly. Yeah. So you've got to catch them when they're quite hard and then they'll give you lots of juice. But it's just a different alternative to apples. Right. Um, oh, you can really smell the mint, it's lovely. So this is really, really nice and refreshing and hydrating and really yeah. good, definitely the, the morning after Christmas Day or New Year's Eve when you've really been overindulging. Anything green is basically going to be good for you. And are these um, good for any 
a time of day or is it better to have them in the morning? What, how would you do this? Um, I think if you're doing like a juice cleanse, you might be doing sort of three or four juices a day. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I'd get it in in the morning, you know, when you're rehydrating the body. Um, and you're more inclined to make it sort of yeah. something you do every morning. Did you put celery in this? Mm -mm. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, I can't taste the celery. <laughs> oh, that's but, yummy. But would you put, put celery in this one? Mm, maybe not, because I just thought we'd do something hydrating. And plus, you said you didn't like celery, so I didn't mm. want to. This is really nice. Um, and if, if there are people that are actually really going for it, mm -hmm. say they want to start, you know, Christmas has gone now, and they really want to do like something really serious in January, yeah. what, and they're only going to have juices... How long should they maybe do that for? Because it's quite a mm. low calorie. So rise, I would, the really only advice I would give on juicing, other than obviously seeing someone who knows about nutrition, yeah. because it can be quite, you know, it, it is very, very low calorie. And if you've got problems with blood glucose, blood yeah. sugar levels, you've got diabetes, or you've got anything out of balance in the body, even though it's a really healthy thing, because it's very low in yeah. calories, it can sort of push those blood balance and sugar balances for even further down. So okay. seek advice. But in general, if you want to add juicing into your life, adding one or two or even three juices a day with one or two different meals, fish, protein, uh, chicken mm. and vegetables is absolutely fine. Okay, that's great. It's still going to detox the system. All right. We don't have, well, we don't actually have time for one more, Hannah, but... No? <laughs> like, okay. What, what would you have done if, like... Well, I time? think I'd probably have done, just, you know, almost put it all in. Carrot, yeah. celery, courgette, apple. I think apple. you could use courgettes as well. Yeah, yeah, courgettes are great because they're, because they give you a lot of water. And mm. so that brings it up. You see how much cucumber, how much water yeah, yeah, the yeah. cucumber gave yeah. us. Um, normally with carrots, you've got to use a whole kilo to get 330 yeah, yeah, mils. So yeah. it's a bit time consuming. That's right. Oh, thank you so much, Hannah. Pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to be doing this for, for January. Juicy get, January. Yeah, juicy January, that's what we called it. All right, guys, so do join us for more after this break. Welcome back to the final part of the Chrissy B Show, everyone, where we have been speaking about detoxing after Christmas. So I want to show you a video from our resident doctor, Rob Hicks, which is all about living with IBS. So now irritable bowel syndrome will affect one third of the British population at some point in their life. And the festive period is the worst time of the year for a flare up as triggers can be very hard to avoid. So here's Dr. Rob Hicks with some advice. Hello and welcome to Doctor's Orders here at the Chrissy B Show. I'm Dr. Rob Hicks. Today we're going to be talking about a long-term digestive system problem called irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. This is a condition where people with IBS suffer intermittent bloating, abdominal cramps, constipation and diarrhea or alternating constipation and diarrhea sometimes. IBS is actually a very common condition Around one in five of us will suffer with a condition at some point in our lives. It's more common in women than it is in men, and it's most common for people in their 20s and 30s, although saying that, it can affect people at any age. Nobody really knows precisely what causes IBS. Some theories are that it's because the gut is oversensitive, or that the gut has a problem digesting certain foods. Infection may be involved, inflammation be, may be involved, certain diets may be involved, but precisely why it happens, we still don't know. But what we do know are the symptoms it causes and actually what we can do to treat those symptoms. Abdominal bloating, abdominal cramping pains, constipation, diarrhea, excess wind, passing mucus when you go to the toilet are common symptoms of IBS, as is a feeling of when you've been to the toilet to do a poo, feeling that you haven't quite emptied your bowel, that there's still some more to come. And from an emotional point of view, irritable bowel syndrome can cause stress, anxiety, and sometimes depression. And because it's a bowel condition, where some people sometimes have to go to the toilet really quickly, it can also lead to isolation because people are embarrassed about their symptoms and so they stay at home, they don't want to socialise. Thankfully, there are lots of things that we can do to help people with IBS. So one thing is to try and identify your personal triggers for flare-ups, for attacks of your IBS symptoms. 
best way of doing this is actually to keep a symptom diary. So you can try and identify what those triggers are, whether there's a pattern. Is it related to activities? Is it related to certain foods? Is it related to periods of stress? Once you've identified those triggers, then of course you can try and avoid them as best you can. Adapting your diet is very important when you're managing IBS and we often talk about increasing the amount of fibre that you have in your diet. But just a word of caution, for some people with IBS, when they do have more fibre, it actually makes their symptoms worse, not better. So with fibre and indeed dietary changes, it's often a case of trial and error to see if it works for you and if it does, how well it works for you. We know that exercise is good for all of our body in general. It's very, very good for helping the gut to function properly. It's also very good for helping to keep IBS symptoms under control. So keep as active as you can. And since stress, is a major trigger for IBS symptoms goes without saying try and keep stress under control in whatever way works for you so it might be jogging on the spot it might be meditation it might be deep breathing exercises listening to music or reading your favorite book or magazine whatever works for you as an individual and of course there is medication available too to manage the symptoms there are drugs called antispasmodics to deal with the, the cramping abdominal pain there are laxatives to deal with the constipation there are anti-diarrhea medicines to deal with the diarrhea and sometimes people are recommended to have a low dose of an antidepressant not necessarily because they're depressed but because the receptors involved with IBS are similar to those involved with depression and that's how those drugs work. Now sometimes for people who have an urgent need to go to the toilet they can find themselves becoming isolated because they'd rather stay at home where they feel safe. Now to avoid having to be fixed to one bathroom there are schemes available around the UK that can actually help people find a toilet when they need to. So there's the National Key Scheme which is run by Disability Rights UK, where for a small charge you can get a key that gives you access to locked public toilets around the UK. The Irritable Bowel Network provides, again for a small fee, a Can't Wait card. This is a card that you can show people in a business or a shop that says basically, I've got a bowel condition, I need to use the toilet urgently, it would be good if you could help me. It helps overcome some of the awkwardness and embarrassment about asking to use somebody else's toilet. So if you'd like to learn more about IBS or you've got IBS already and you really would like more information or you'd like it better controlled than it is at the moment, then do have a chat with your own GP and seek their advice. And that's Doctor's Orders. Thank you very much to Dr. Rob Hicks there. So now it's time to talk about a few tips on how to detox your mind after a stressful Christmas. So my first point is to try as much as you can to wake up happily. So what do I mean by that? I don't know if you've noticed, this happens with me sometimes. It's like as soon as I, I wake up, all these thoughts start to, to come to my mind about things that I need to do or something that happened the day before. And it's, it's actually really easy to fall into the trap first thing in the mor morning as soon as you open your eyes to start thinking so many different things and getting stressed out so it's really important that you avoid your mind getting bombarded with loads of different thoughts and worries so give yourself if you feel these thoughts coming to you immediately feel, force your mind to think of something else and to clear your mind what I like to do is just sort of well first thing I do is go to the bathroom and after that I do like to say a little prayer and get my get my um, day off to a good start and you need to do what works for you as well but don't let those negative thoughts bombard your mind as soon as you wake up because you maybe you've already been stressed over the Christmas period and then now you're going to be even more stressed sort of going into the new year as well the second point is to make sure that you let go of any arguments. So as we heard in the intro, uh, our research showed that so many families argue on Christmas day, Christmas during Christmas dinner, and maybe there were family members that you haven't seen in a while and it brought up old memories and old arguments. And unfortunately you did have some, uh, a quite a strained Christmas. If I were in your shoes, what I would do is actually contact those family members that maybe you, you had a tiff with and, you know, it didn't go so well. And just don't take those things into the new year with you. Just settle everything, have a talk, maybe meet for a coffee, talk over things and just get rid of those things. Detox from all the arguments and from all the, the family stress that you had. And that will make you feel better and, you know, more positive about the new year that's coming very soon. The third point is... 
to clear things out. So this one is one of my favorites because I love to declutter. So start off the new year right. If your home is overcrowded, then chances are your mind will be too. So do go through your food cupboards and get rid of any food that's expired. Throw away things that are broken, that are just gathering dust. You can't even use them anyway. So what's the point of having them there? And especially with the clothes, if things don't fit, why are you keeping them? You might say, well, you know, in January, I'm gonna go on a diet, I'm gonna detox. But are you really gonna wear those clothes or are they just old and they're not even fashionable anymore? If they're in good condition, mind, do put them in a bag and donate to charity and you'll be doing something good for someone else as well. So when your house feels lighter, so will your mind and you'll be able to think clearer, which takes me on to my next point, which is to plan the future. So this time of year can unfortunately be quite depressing for people because maybe they look at things that have gone wrong in the year, they look at all the negative things that happened, but the best way to deal with those kind of thoughts is to look forward and start planning a better year for yourself. So since you've now hopefully decluttered your home, you know, your mind is clearer, you can think better, now is the time to start actually planning things, what you want to achieve, what maybe you could improve on from last year and really get the ball rolling for a new life in the new year. And the final point I want to share is to pay attention to your body. So do not forget about taking care of your body. Now, we do talk about this quite a bit on the show, but it's not just about doing the exercise and, you know, eating healthily, but you need to actually know what is going on in your body. How is your body feeling? Is there any pain? Are there any aches? Do you need to stop and rest? Are you over exercising? Because that can sometimes be a a big thing as well. So make sure that you take care of your body because your body influences how you think and vice versa. All right guys, so we have reached the end of today's program and I do hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. Now, if you have anything that you would like to share with us, if you have any comments about the program, things that you would like to see included here, please do get in touch with us because as we always say, this is your program too and we want you to get the best out of it. So do email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Welcome back everyone, where as you know, today we're looking at how you can take care of your body after the gluttony, if that applies to you, of Christmas. Christmas. Okay, let me start again, I'm sorry. Hello everyone, today I'm in the lovely streets of Angel in North London to find out what you guys think about detoxing after Christmas and what to do in the evening. Hello everyone, today I'm in the lovely streets of Angel in North London to find out Hello everyone, today I'm in the lovely little streets of Angel in North London to find out how...